Welcome to another 10K Hours. I'm Michael Pecchia. I'm Justin Fields. And today we have Alec Gillis from Amalgamated Dynamics. Welcome, Alec. Thank you for having me, gentlemen. Yeah, the I, man, I, the myth, the legend. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's amazing <laughs> to have you here. It really is. Um, I'm, I'm looking at your resume and I, I don't even know where to start. I mean, it goes back to 1981, <laughs> but some of your bigger films like Aliens, mm. I, I mean, just let's let's start there actually because i, I mean that's it's a good month. place to start yeah I, I mean that's big I, explain what you did just a tiny one. film yeah it didn't really have film. an impact on not much cultural <laughs> significance none whatsoever no <laughs> yeah no yes well i guess at that point i had been in the in the in the business for about five years and i had worked around like at roger corman's where i started and actually my corman connections are what led me to find my way to stan winston Hmm. Uh, so it was working with uh, Jim Cameron at Roger Corman's and the Skotak brothers, who are the the tabletop miniature geniuses. Gail Ann Hurd was there, you know, in from 80 to when I was there, 80 to 84 or so, 83. And um, so Jim had recommended me to Stan to come work on Terminator. But I had already taken work on um, Friday the 13th part. Four. Ooh, and we were yeah. kill Jason, you know. Yeah, so we yeah. In charge of killing yeah. Jason. That was for Greg Canham. It's an important time. job. Yeah, and then Greg Canham left that show. Tom Savini came in, so I had had a chance to work for some really the interesting, Tom Savini, the man, the, the myth, and the legend, yeah. the real guy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so I I then connected with Stan Winston, and early in my Stan Winston tenure uh, is when I is when I contributed to Aliens. Mm -hmm. And what did you do for Aliens? What was anything significant um, or? Yeah, I, I was, uh, Stan gave me, like initially when we were in LA when we were doing like smaller sculptures, because, you know, most of the work was done in London, but we did get a jump, a head start on it uh, in LA. So I was sculpting the face hugger and uh, which was, you know, that was a dream come true for me because that was my favorite. Yeah. It still is one of my favorite designs and so iconic i mean yeah it, it still pops up every you know everywhere yeah. so oh, yeah. often no, often imitated but never replicated and you know it was it was <laughs> it was a challenge to you know be given something that giger actually oh, yeah. roger dickon had sculpted that in uh in the original alien but giger designed it um and so we were all just freaking thrilled and scared uh because we were doing a sequel to alien and and that was no small task, you know. Yeah. And Cameron had done Terminator, but there was something about you know the mystique of Ridley Scott and H.R. Giger and Dan O'Bannon and uh, you know all that. Just, yeah. It was just it was just that was just such a massively game changing movie that for suddenly like the Roger Corman group of people to be in charge of that, which means Jim Cameron and Gail Hurd and the Skotak brothers on the miniatures and, mm -hmm. and then Stan, you know, uh, Stan, he wasn't a Corman guy, but um, it, it, anyway, it was, it was a really, it was a heady time, but um, uh, thankfully we were um, ignorant and, and overly confident. Well, that's That's always good to be right. I was going to say naivety that, is key. Yeah. 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 It gets you Sometimes that works out for the better. Yeah. I mean, because you, you, you dive into it <clears throat> and the excitement just carries you through it yeah. because of what you're working on. Yeah. You're not really like, you, you don't see the bigger picture at the time. It's yeah. the excitement. It just pulls you through. And you have the, uh, youthful energy to just figure if there's a problem, I'll work my way out of it. Yeah. One of, one of my first jobs, I was literally just doing Photoshop cleanup at a company and then, they asked me like, oh, you, you know, ZBrush, right? And I was like, yeah. 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 And then he left the room and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> what did I just do? Now you know, I gotta learn thankfully ZBrush. I had really great, you know, Jared Kravetsky and, and uh, Jared Moran's taught me yeah. how to use it. But yeah. yeah, it was really interesting. It was a fun time. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you see a chance, you just got to take it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, just you know, know that you can do it, have the, yeah. have the confidence. But like I said, I, you know, I wasn't like, I wasn't a total newbie. So, you know, and, you know, five years in the business and, and having approached a lot of, you know, I'd cut my teeth already, uh, I felt. Yeah. And then I also did the um, Bishop splitting in half stuff with Lance Henriksen and um, sculptural tasks on the miniature queen and stuff. And then a lot of puppeteering and on set and, you know. Now, Lance now, is the best, by the way. Yeah, he he is. One of the nicest fantastic. guys I've ever met. Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. And he is I met at there. your studio. Actually. Yeah, he's yeah. great. He's yeah. great. And something people don't realize when you're doing the practical effects, but when you switch to puppeteering, you go on to the production side 
And you, it's, it's a whole different world. You go kind of into the acting world yeah. at that point, yeah. which um, I was at Stan's for a short time when he had a digital department. And I didn't realize how everybody kind of was like, I, I, I want to get on set to puppeteer because that leads into residuals. Yeah. Which is. Well, aliens did not lead to residuals for us. <laughs> we were not on SAG. It was in, it uh -huh. was in England. We weren't in SAG. We didn't know anything about SAG at that time. But yeah, no, it's, uh, it is extremely desirable and lucrative. You know, we're here, the, heard the stories about the, like the huge movies like Jurassic yeah. Park, you know, where people were getting $80,000 checks or whatever, uh, you know, in residuals. But um, yes, re residuals are a wonderful thing. And, and uh, non-existent. Not on <laughs> aliens. Yeah. And yeah. now my residual checks, uh, yeah. it's been a little while, but my residual mm -hmm. checks, you know, I, I get the ones that are like, um, the check itself is less than the postage. <laughs> oh, <to mail>. the, <laughs> Plus the paper it's written on the postage yeah. and everything. Yeah. It's like, why did you send out 10 I cents? I have a few that are one cent, you know, yeah. I just keep those. because they're Frame funny. those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're funny. <laughs> But now you doing this and, and now we're in a digital world, but back then you had to get your hands into clay and, and do all that practical. Um, the good stuff. Yeah, it, it's a tangible item, which not a lot of people today are into. Um, was it fulfilling to get your hands and really, you know, kind of get your hands dirty? Yeah, I mean, I still love it. I don't do enough of it personally anymore. Um, but my studio does, you know, we still are very much into the practical and the old school because people are seeing a, a value to it. Now fans are, uh, you know, even like fans tend to create this false, um, tribalism between digital people and practical people. And there is no, there is no split digital, yeah. digital people. I get a lot of friends and many of my friends are digital. <laughs> um, they, they, uh, but they, you know, a lot of them are like, they have all this, you look at their, their workspaces and they got all the freaking alien toys and all that stuff. Cause yeah. we all grew up watching the same stuff and loving it all. Oh, yeah. And most digital people would like to have their, their load lightened a little, by having more practical and they love it. So yeah. I, I, but it's, that's not where the issue, that's not where the decisions get made to go predominantly digital on movies that happens at the studio level. Yeah. And, and right. And once again, you're all artists, hands down, digital clay, practical. The best uh, is the best is both. Yeah, in my opinion. It's that yeah, blend. And, you know? and, and definitely I have seen it come around where films, um, are using both again because they want that feel. They're really figuring out, the the what's the happy medium between the two and what's going to look best which i'm happy it's back yeah yeah well we all owe in the practical effects world we all owe a lot to baby yoda yeah that and put to, it back on the map for Werner sure herzog who yeah. apparently <laughs> shamed them and called them cowards for daring to cut <laughs> you're going to cut Vene. this out of yeah if that's true i don't know but our friends at legacy created yeah. that thing and i'll tell you like it is so handy in a meeting to have a a topical uh example of a, of a successful practical effect like Absolutely. i can always go back to aliens right i can always go you know aliens was done pre-digital oh really was it like because there's a lot of people who yeah. just don't know producers and directors yep. and you say yeah look at the power loader fight that is all analog it's amazing there's no, there's yeah. not even digital wire removal or anything in that sequence and it is beautiful it stand it holds up beautifully so that's always a nice one but it's yeah. not like yeah but that's from a thousand years ago so if you can just say hey baby yoda you know it's, it's yeah. sort of a shorthand yeah. and people go oh, yeah we want that baby yoda feeling we want yeah. baby yoda so it's good for people to have to to remind people that there's uh, you know the successful techniques are even out there. even like the sleep chambers didn't they they made two of them and then that was a mirror yeah and then it made it look like they did eight. Like yeah. it's like thing tricks like that mm -hmm. you find so valuable that I absolutely love. Yeah, because it, it gives you a little bit of glimpse behind the the movie magic. Yeah, and it definitely makes you go, oh, well, maybe maybe me and my friends can do something like that or figure it out that yeah. way. Yeah. But what's really interesting, and we're gonna have actually one of the guys that's using uh, mega scans in Unreal to light the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda and all those things. So. What's interesting is that I would see a lot more practical builds of characters and creatures and the environment is digital. Yeah. Which well, is that's, a great way to do that it. whole like LED screen thing. It's amazing. It's there. amazing. Yeah. Mind blowing. Yeah. The virtual sets. But back to, and I think what you're talking about too back then, they really planned the shots out because yeah. they realized it was practical on set. 
they look through the camera and go, it's showing a little too much. We can tell it's fake. Let's put it into shadows a little more. Mm. Now, <clears throat> with, with Practical coming back, a lot of the people don't understand that when they shot Aliens, they they were they were really setting the shots up. Now they're like, oh, we got a practical, stick it in, and they're like, wow, it doesn't look that good. So they have to find that happy medium again yeah. and and start planning out way before. Yeah, it understand. does. It does. It does require. I mean, you know, it's a it's simplistic to say that. Yeah, with digital, you can just uh, you know shoot a plate, and, uh, but that's often what happens. You know, people, and then it gets dumped on the digital artist, and they're like, oh God, this green screen has wrinkles in it and shadows all across, <laughs> or there is no green screen or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yes, there were, you know, storyboards, but if, but you know, back in, uh, 85, uh, when we were making aliens, there was no, uh, there, there wasn't previs to the extent that there is mm. now. There was not digital, you know, you didn't have all the, everything laid out where it's the, the lens is pre-chosen, the, you know, the, the, the camera, you didn't have that. You had Cameron's sketches and sometimes just a shot list. But the great thing that we had there was that Cameron understood yeah. practical effects. So he could line up a shot and just go get the guy. Okay. Turn him a little, boom, you're, you're shooting. Because remember, if you have a guy in an alien suit, he is an actor. Yeah. So like yeah. you don't have to necessarily storyboard every shot yeah. with an actor if it's over the shoulders, you know, talking heads, whatever. And there's a little bit of that. You can grab shots with practical effects, which I find very exciting. It's very freeing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's less restrictive. You know. Yeah. Right. Um, you, you can kind of get on set and see see the magic happening and collaborate a lot more when yeah. You know, the shot list is, you know, you get stringent, you got to stick to it. Yeah. So, and yeah, if, I mean, if, I could see that. Yeah. And if you have a if you have a character that is, uh, you know, a creature character that is is humanoid and doesn't have a whole bunch of support structures and, yeah. you know, all that stuff, then you can kind of shoot it like an actor. Yeah. Um, but when you get into a lot of gear, you do have to get more specific with the pre-planning and where the cables are going to go. You got to run the yeah. cables and suddenly you're like, oh, shit, no, we, we ran them that way. So you can't get they'll be in the shot and then. Yeah, there's digital cleanup as a safety, yeah. but back in the day, you you know, you did try to do everything as hidden as as you possibly could. Although there's some wires and flaws and things in Aliens that yeah, I kind of like I that. See. Thing. Yeah, don't <laughs> we? You see, I mean, you crazy. Don't like it. Yeah, but you. Why don't there. we love the Scorpion King then? Why don't we love did that? Did you see that somebody went back yeah, and did the did. face the face tuning or the uh, the yeah. face swap? They yeah, really yeah, helped yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah helped yeah. it out. But like, how come that doesn't work? Right, like. Digital that has not aged well, like the Scorpion King. There's a right? couple that really don't age well, and I think it's just because they didn't blend both of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or they like tried to push it before it was ready. Yeah, right? it's not charming. I guess because yeah. of the Uncanny Valley. But I find it yeah. charming when I watched a a a, a, a screening of uh, The Wizard of Oz, and you can see that the backdrops on uh, on a big screen they stop. Yeah, they're just slammed up against. Yeah. you know, they're just right yeah. there. Or the lion's tail is on a big thick wire. You know, but like. Like you said, it, yeah. I, I'm like, I like that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting in that film. Um, I did stereo for it and oversource stereo for it. So, so oh, I really did you? I didn't even it. know that. Yeah. That, you know, a normal film <clears throat> may have like 2,200 shots. Mm. That had like 200 and something shots. Mm -hmm. And the shots are so long. And like, you, and I was like, oh my God, they really thought these out of, you know, a normal film with all those shots yeah. and then wow how did they yeah. put this story together these long moving pans mm -hmm. in the storytelling it's really amazing to see how they did it and the planning must have been outstanding yeah 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 well that's you talking about the wizard of oz yeah yeah aliens also only has about 200 vfx shots in it compared really? to like the thousands that are oh in, yeah because every shot these days is technically a vfx shot yeah because coloring and color grading has gotten so sophisticated that you know, they become, and if you want to have your mind blown, you look at the, the, um, BTS footage of the Revenant, right. Mm. Where right. that is like, Oh my God, where the director's talking about how, yes, we just went out into the wilderness without a, <laughs> and the, my cinematographer is such a genius. And meanwhile, there's a bunch of exhausted VFX guys <laughs> who really lit it after the fact. Yeah. Which, and, and it is a tour de force of, of naturalistic digital work. I, yeah. I, I know someone came to me and said, Hey, you, you know, that film, could you guys wrote everything out in another film like that? And I was like, yes, but do we want to do, maybe we just plan it again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that it's th that becomes movie magic, right? <laughs> no one really understands how much, Hey, it was one shot, one long shot. And that's how it was. Even though number, number of takes and the sun was changing and all that. I had to go back, yeah. fix it. 
movie magic at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. keep a little thing mystery at that point. Also, time. also <laughs> tons of divorces. <laughs> you know how, how Pixar always has that that cute um you know production babies and the, yeah, list yeah, the yeah. babies they should do production divorces too because <laughs> oh, digital yeah. people i think are being run through the ringer oh, and man. i cannot imagine that yeah. they're they're you know yeah it's it's really it's like, sad I've, but true what yeah are the, what are the statistics on that i don't know i don't know i don't know <laughs> i just know i worked a lot of long hours are you married <laughs> did you get divorced i yes <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Was it because of, I don't want to get too personal. <laughs> no, but you're not too was personal. It, because it wasn't work? because of that. It wasn't because of work. Okay. Yeah, what was it? Actually? We, we'll, we'll go down another road on that. We'll go to divorce court and we'll figure that one out. <laughs> we'll have another whole episode on that one. I love it. Ah, oh, shit. Let me put it to you this way, sir. <laughs> I'm doing podcasts for a living now. So. I'm keeping the hours much more reasonable. Oh, man. 10K I hours. No, not anymore. Oh my God. But now e even talking about 10 K hours, you, you've put your hours in, you've, you if know, not you triple and quadruple those with, hours. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, looking at that, how, how did you get into this? Did it stumble into it? Is it, you wanted to go into filmmaking? Tell us how you really got into this. Yeah. It's like, I, I was very fortunate that I was, uh, you know, bitten and smitten, uh, early with uh, movies like, you know, the original Planet of the Apes and King Kong and all that stuff. My dad was a, a, a fan of effects movies. He was an insurance salesman and he sold uh, insurance policies in 30 Rock in New York, right? So oh, he wow. met Dick Smith and he met these makeup guys. He was in their studios and Dick saw Smith. face casts. And he was there with, you know, guys doing uh, VFX for Playhouse 90 back in like the 50s, you know? Yeah. So he always had this like memory of all the stuff that he saw and he would tell me about him and it was fascinating to me. And he would also wake me up. He'd, you know, like, don't tell your mother, but come out here and look at this, you know, the the the, the network premiere of Jason and the Argonauts or whatever, just oh, in time wow. to see the the skeletons coming up out of the ground. Ray yeah. yeah. And that just like blew my mind. And, and so from a very young age, I had a purpose and probably, I think it was around 12 or 13 is when I decided I want to make monsters. For yeah. Cause I saw a Ray Harry, a, a, a magazine, I picked up a magazine, uh, castle of Frankenstein. And I paged through every page had my favorite monsters. And then I realized, it was one guy, Ray Harryhausen, who was designing these things. The legend. And making, and I'm like, oh, this is a job. Grown ups, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what it takes to be that guy, but yeah. that's what I want to be. He inspired yeah. so many. Yeah. I, I mean, he really a whole generation yeah. Yeah. of special effects. Yes. People. And and like beyond beyond like, oh, that that became my career choice. It really was a um it was a guiding light for me because it kept me out of trouble. Cause I was like, you know, I would be sculpting on a Saturday night. I would, you know, not go out and get crazy with people, uh, you know, when they were all with your words, Walkman. I, yeah. With my walk. That was, this was pretty walk. Or, uh, uh, beta. It was beta, beta. No, I'm just, no, this was, this was like splitting the record down. The moody Bruce. Seven <laughs> nice. Sojourn. Nice. Nice. And listen to that while sculpting. Yeah. But it, basically, yeah, basically a misspent youth. Yeah. I didn't have any fun, Yeah, but here I am here you are. Now, with now, an IMDb list. Mm -hmm. it, and it's a long one. Did you have, were you naturally talented? Could, you, you know, did you have the art bug? Like you, you could sculpt and you understood perspective and you, yeah, I, could, I, I, I was pretty good. Like, like, uh, I was a pretty good, uh, you know, I could illustrate, um, and sculpt. Um, and, uh, but I, I feel like I, I've always had, I've always felt very confident in my ideas for things and for, you know, I approach it like filmmaking. So to me, like, like, um, I never rose to the heights of the best sculptor or the best illustrator, because to me, those were, uh, tools to use mm -hmm. as a filmmaker. And I approach um, effects as a, as, a, as a filmmaker would as well. Mm. I and mean, that's also why I haven't, once I got past a certain point in my career and had to, you know, open my own studio with Tom Woodruff Jr. The? The Tom the. Woodruff Jr. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, and he was of a similar mindset. Yeah. Um, that, that we were happy to have excellent people come and work for us. Because they bring their best and, and it's, and we don't have, and it doesn't all have to come from our fingertips. Something I kind of learned from Stan Winston. Stop. And, also. And, and one of those people <laughs> is sitting in this room right now. And his name is Gobi Fields Forever. 
<laughs> thank you, sir. Do you thank remember you. me singing that? To yes, you? I do. Thank uh, you. It, it haunts my dreams. It does it as long as I'm <laughs> in your dreams. I don't care if I'm haunting you. Um, oh, it, but that's a sign of a good boss, right? Is hire the right people. Yes. And and Stan used to say that. You guys are going to make me look good, right? You used to, you know, you know, you know, yeah, you yeah. know, Stan. Yeah, um, I, I mean, that that's an important, I, I mean, yeah. it's so important to do it to be that when you're in that position is you can't do everything yourself. So you no. go look for the best people. Yeah. And quite honestly, like I, I, I found myself, it was very difficult when I, when I would, when we started the studio, like around the time of Tremors, uh, you know, I, I did oh, a good amount a good of movie. sculpture. Yeah, yeah movie, I love man. that. Movie. I love it's great movie. It's so great. I did a good amount of sculpture on Tremors, you know, Goro's head, you know, I got Mortal my, Kombat. Got, yeah. yeah. You know, it ha I had to do revisions cause they're like, he looks too old. I'm like, that's character. You son. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Andy Schoenberg come in and, you know, yeah. re-sculpt this. Um, because I was like, fuck it. I like it the way I did it. So, but Andy Schoenberg's going to make the client happy. True artists. Yeah. I like the way yeah, I yeah. did it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. But, uh, but um, I forget what I, exactly what I was saying, but, 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 but um, I, I, I'm, I like bringing, Stan said this. He said, he, he's done enough of the sculpture. He said, I've worked with clay. Now people are my clay. And I remember kind of that's rolling such my a eyes. Good quote. I, I remember yeah. rolling my eyes because I was like, what are you saying? I mean, like, how are you manipulating me? You're, you know, <laughs> squeezing me. And squeeze. But the the older I got, the more I realized, oh yeah, that that is that is true. It is true that like you work with, uh, you work you're working creatively with with the the, the medium, mm -hmm, and yeah. sometimes the medium more than often than not is people, mm -hmm. more so than your technique or what have you. Yeah, no, yeah. Th that is true. I, I mean, I, I see it all the time and, and I see that struggle sometimes. Sometimes artists can't give up that control to actually let the, yeah. their team do that. Yeah. And, and you end off stumbling. So um, it's, a, it's a hard it's a hard lesson to learn. It's a hard transition because, you know, you want to be in control of everything. But the realization is you, you can't you yeah. have to hire the right people and trust that they're going to give you what they what you want. Yeah. You know, and and it's not always easy. No, and I also feel like I might not actually get what I. Sorry, I'll get what I want, but maybe not what I expect. Like, mm. I, if I if I come into it like with a super hardcore um, idea of what this thing should look like or what it should be, then I'm closing off the opportunity for other people to bring right. their unique vision to it. And one of the things that we prided ourselves on. Uh, from the from the inception at ADI is that we can uh, work with a wide variety of skills. Uh, sorry, of styles. Yeah. Um, and and you know we can do a Santa Claus movie with its cute and you know warm and fuzzy Scooby Doo. Do, yeah, we do Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo. Scooby -Doo, I remember right? Scooby -Doo yeah. So 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 that is like to to have that kind of versatility, which turns into hireability and longevity. Um, you have to kind of like not necessarily force yourself to the front of that. And there's an argument, you know, there are people who say, who, who could rightfully say that my attitude is just sort of workmanlike, you know, it's like, it's, it's like very practical and, and, you know, great. But what about HR Giger? That guy was all about his own style, ferociously yeah. developing yeah. an entire language on his own. I have not done that. Yeah. You know, or Rob Bottin, who like you see Rob Bottin's work and you go, yeah, that's Bottin's work. All, all, right, like, all right. I can think of is that YouTube song that those girls oh, wrote. Oh, that was so precious. Yeah. Where are those girls? <laughs> I don't know. Now they're, they're great. Oh, they were singing about him coming back. I don't know where they, have you seen this? No, I don't even know. I'll show you so later. Charming. It's adorable. We'll, yeah. put the, we'll put the link in the description. <laughs> oh, it's so charming. Video. I love it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, but that's kind of like, you know, for Tom and I, when we formed the company, we had to kind of like, we formed it in 88. So that was like, you know, Stan oh, had, was yet to do Jurassic Park, you know, yeah. uh, Rick Baker had was yet to do the men in black movies. And, you know, they, obviously they were the, the big Rick's the another great big guys yeah, on yeah. the block, but mm -hmm. we had to look at it and go like, well, how are we going to brand ourselves differently from those guys? Cause you know, if we're just as expensive and we have the exact same attitudes or mindsets, they may, they're going to go yeah. with those guys. So for us, we said we are going to be the flexible people who really like, you know, the first half of any meeting is going to be us looking the director in the eyes and just keeping our mouth shut and listening and 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 drawing out what that director is looking for and what and really get it and being sensitive to that and not just kind of going, yeah, 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 this is now a Tom and Alex show and here's what we're going right. to, you know, do. So we were always um, we felt we always supported 
and you know that that's not you know a lot of people don't a lot of people with a very very sort of like pride of authorship might not um agree with that but yeah, and uh, you made it more collaborative yeah you know? and i i just kind of feel like it's fun i think i'm more of a people person and I, and I, but it was learned you know early on in my career i was like get away from me i'm doing this by myself <laughs> you idiots you know and uh there were probably people early on who worked with me that kind of maybe felt like i was uh a little bit too uh you know pushy or whatever, whatever yeah, but it would be. if yeah. you had kept that mentality you probably wouldn't still be around that you evolved and you changed yeah i mean that that worked for me that yeah. worked for me um you know, my good friend, Kevin Yeager, who, who does the, uh, he, he did, you know, Chucky designed the look of Chucky and built those animatronics as well as Freddy Krueger from, you know, the second and third and whatever. Oh, yeah. he, he's a, he is a phenomenal artist. He's a much better artist than I am in every way. He, he'll like paint these little oil paintings, you know, and huge oil paintings that are just photographically real and have depth of field to them. He did one, he posted on Instagram where he's like going, it's just his hand and he's like picking through chains, like coins and pennies. And then he goes and turns one penny over and it's got a painting of Pennywise, which we did the makeup for Pennywise. We designed and created that. Oh, for the, for the new It film. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Kevin, so it's, he's painted it on the back of a penny and then he cuts in and he's got like a two hair brush or something. And, he's in there. Jeez. <laughs> and I look and I, text him like you freaking show off because i can't do that <laughs> yeah and he's like i did that yeah. for you and i was like yeah well how come you have twice the followers that i that i do <laughs> but kevin is an example of a guy who really he still has a fire in his gut to 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 be the greatest master of his technique that he mm -hmm. possibly can and I think that's phenomenal. I'm envious of that. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm probably, I fall more on that side of the Stan Winston fence where I say like, people are my clay because I just want to yeah. be around people. I don't want to be like, uh, you know, cloistered away in a black room. Yeah. Like you guys are. Yeah. No, oh, I'm uh, kidding. You guys have a, I love this. This is a clubhouse. Yeah. I love it. I'm envious of that. It's a, it's a fun little sandbox. We're building. I love yeah. it. I love yeah. It. And, and definitely one, once again, focus, we're, we're the same way. Focus on that collaboration. It, it is not one person. It, it's, no. It's a team. It's the artwork. It's the artist. Right, right. It's coming together. And, and you said it of everybody putting their opinion in and, and getting their style because yeah. it can always bring something out that you weren't yeah. expecting. Yeah. And it gives the director that choice, which is so important. Yes. Yeah, knowing where your strengths lie. I mean, that's that's yeah. kind of the foundation of what we're doing here. You know, like. I'm I'm not good at certain things, but so and so is at this. So then, when that kind of a job comes in, it's either okay, well, you take the lead and you tell us what we need to do, so we can get the stuff out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there, there there is no set art director. It changes from job to job. I think here, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and mm -hmm. and putting everybody at the table. Uh, I, I hate that telephone game of. No, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna meet the director and I'm gonna pass that information aside. It's like it's no. such a mistake. I think yeah, it, it, it's bringing the artist to the table, sitting around the table, hearing yeah. what they say, and, yeah. and then you know, and the back end go, how did we all hear this? And and then you put all your thoughts together and you produce this amazing amount of work when you all hear. But when you play that telephone game, yeah. this, I, I've seen the artist just sit at their desk go, what the hell do you want? I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'm not <laughs> if I'm getting the full detail. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's managing that properly, but giving the artist the voice. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, this is why I, uh, when we are designing uh, something that is, that we are also going to build in the practical real world, I'd like to I always struggle with this because because, you know, Photoshop first and then ZBrush has kind of changed the landscape of how design works. Yeah. And I feel like, the, you know, it's, they're phenomenal tools, uh, but I feel like there can be a bottleneck of of uh, of those voices. Right. You can it stifle can, yeah. those voices yeah. if you have like, you know, we've all seen that where it's the the Photoshop artist is working away at the director's shoulder and the director's going, Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And then it's handed off to someone like me in, in some cases. And I'm like, Ooh, the perspective's all off on this. And wait, what the hell this is supposed to be? Mm -hmm. This is a makeup. Have you looked at the proportions of this? Yeah. It's not. And so I didn't get a voice in that. So mm -hmm. I don't get, so now the director has to go through this, um, iteration. Kind of, yeah. This, this, this like, you know, shock that, uh, the thing that he loved is not, but it's it looks not like a photograph. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why can't it just step off the page? Yeah. And like, well, we got to make a bunch of changes. And now actually you're going backwards and 
and sometimes the directors are are disappointed in there and yeah. they're like going, Oh, I thought I could have, yeah. well, you can, if you find a nine foot tall, 150 pound person, to wear this, <laughs> that, it will yeah. look exactly like that's that. That's something uh, we've, we've, we've addressed here. We call it fix it and prep and, and it's getting everybody at the table from the practical to the visual effects, to the production designer. And we go, we work through a script and at those points we figure all that process out because, uh, a designer doesn't understand the practical side. The visual right. effects doesn't understand the practical right. side. And we all talk about it. Yeah. And we create the solution beforehand mm -hmm. because of what you're talking about. Yeah. That can take a two-day shoot to a three-day shoot, a four-day yeah. shoot to a six-day. And you realize you're compounding that, you know, that schedule and costs are going up. And you realize, you look at the line producer, you, go, you realize if we just sat in that room and answered all those questions then mm -hmm. and spent a little money, Mm -hmm. We would have saved everything on that production on the back end, side. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I get it, but it's really pushing that forward. But we nurture that here and, mm -hmm. and give the voice to yeah. get everybody at the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, so I important. remember when, I, I can't remember what film it was, but I think that was the first job I worked with you on. I think Neville was there as well. Was that Incursion? Yeah, it was Incursion. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is that Neville I remember you know, Neville was on it as uh, well. Another great uh, guy. Yeah, another great guy. Uh, but I remember... I remember showing up and I think ZBrush was pretty new to ADI at that point. Probably, yeah. And I remember, <laughs> this is, at least this is my view of it. I, I remember showing up with a laptop and you and Tom coming out with paper and pencil. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, I, I, I'm going to do it on the laptop. And I remember distinctly the look that you guys gave me was like, he's not going to work out. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> what's that? What is that machine box you've got? Yeah, yeah. What is it? It opens. Is that like an etch a sketch? Let's and I remember by the by the end of the day, the stuff that I produced, you were like, I remember you were like, you you, you everyone leave, you stay. We have questions. Mm. And I remember you guys going, <laughs> did you know about this job ahead of time? Like, how did you turn in <laughs> this many? You know, by the end of the day, and then, you know, oh. I remember uh, the, uh, that's when I met Paul. Paul Komoda. Paul Komoda yeah. He's an amazing yeah. illustrator yeah. Uh, and sculptor, yes. uh, yeah. which if if he touches ZBrush, my life is over. Right. Um, Got to keep which, him insecure about Paul, that. if you're listening, yeah. don't use ZBrush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I remember, I remember well, that that's distinctly. The, that, yeah. that is the kind of like, like that to this day, I still don't want it. Like a Paul Komoda who works 2D, right? Traditional yeah. 2D. I don't want to... Uh, exclude him from a oh design. never 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 so never. i love to like just say okay here's your task right like mm -hmm. here you know throw it at, because it's a great jumping off point the only thing is that now you know now that uh you know we are versed in zbrush and it's so fast and all i'm always like looking at the guys sketching and it's a slower process right it's, it's just it a, is but if, if being in the room with him inspired all of us like sure. even Maury oh, and yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah no, that's what i, I it was amazing look at it as like it. the you know some legion of superheroes everybody comes to it with a superpower mm -hmm. and you know somebody might be sculpting a maquette and they have, they cannot draw to save their lives they don't know zbrush what happened but they can sculpt like but the wind sculpt yeah and they might not sculpt as fast as a zbrush guy works but there's a different quality to it yeah it always yeah um like like in in the on the godzilla work um you know, uh, Michael Doherty, uh, the director, really responded to sculpture mm -hmm. because he liked to stand in front of it and, and look, look at it. Yeah, yeah. and that's in, well, that's what we ended up doing for it's Rodin. Tangible, man. Yeah. It's tangible, man. You can't so beat important. it. When yeah. the first time yeah. I three D printed something out, I was like amazed. I was like, mm. and now it's real. Yeah. This is a feeling I'll never forget. Right. You know, right. like wow. It's, it's yeah. come. F it's come full circle again. I know that the maquettes and, and those models have gone away, but. They're coming I, I back. See them coming They're back coming back because yeah. w once again, getting them all on the table, and and either it's a three D print or a clay print or a sculpt, the director can actually put it on the table and talk about a shot, and I'll everybody you, understands. It's it's there, amazing. There there is nothing more powerful than a maquette or a bust that has lifelike eyes mm. and that's looking at you. Yeah, that oh, yeah. is <laughs> a character, and I'll do that. Like I'll I'll be like, you know, if I set up at a table like this. And I've got a character. Normally what I'll do is I'll, you know, I don't, I don't like them, you know, just looking yeah. straight ahead. I like to yeah. put a turn to the head, you know, some life mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. right? And maybe, you know, make the eyes off to the side and I'll say, where's the head person? Where's the director going to sit? 
And I'll go, oh, probably right here. So then I'll just, I'll sit there and I'll align it so that when I take that cloth off of let me, it. Let me just it's go ahead and uh, staring. write this. Write this yeah, no, do that. <laughs> you you yeah, should do that. That's a great tip, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's important. Um, and you can watch them and it takes their breath away. Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, that's I, the I, that's the real reward right there is when you see someone and they, yeah. they're like, I can see this. Mm -hmm. Let's do this film. Mm -hmm. This is going to be great. That was yeah. the Scooby-Doo phenomenon. Yeah. I learned that back on Scooby-Doo. What's the Scooby-Doo yeah. phenomenon? We What's had, um, Tom and I, had read oh look they're doing a scooby-doo right it'll mm -hmm. probably be digital but maybe there'll be some practical stuff we had this envision of like this mixed bag <laughs> of like jurassic park style like we'll do some the digital got right naive as hell yeah but um so we just decided we're going to do a scooby-doo uh, bust uh we'll just pay for it we'll just it, and it was charles roven who, who we had worked with before and we liked him and um so we brought don lanning in and don lanning, oh don oh wow Don has Don's a great really too. great style. He, he just does things with such beautiful volume and they're so expressive, right? So we talked, we set the, the pose with him and it was a lot of fun. And we made the, and then we flocked it. And, made, and the idea was we're going to make a, a Great Dane that looks, uh, you know, 80% real and 20% cartoony. And mm -hmm. we did this thing and, and uh, we took it in to the meeting and it went over like gangbusters. It was great. It's, Chuck, it's one of my favorite pieces in the Chuck show. Chuck Roven yeah. uh, called us and said, guys, uh, our script sucks, but your <laughs> sculpture got this movie greenlit. And we're like, that's <laughs> great. Oh, that's man. a that's great awesome. story. I love and it. And then within about a month, they were like, there's, there's no practical. It's all digital. Oh, and they were like, oh, <laughs> not even a little paw, maybe a lighting <laughs> reference, a fluffy stuffy. Oh. We'll use it. I'm not disparaging Chuck. It was, yeah. it was, it, you know, just the, the way the process went, especially yeah. back then. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, uh, <laughs> the final icing on the cake, if, if that's what it is, or is it salt in the wound? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, a bit of both. It's yeah. A, a little both. icing in the wound. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Was that we got Diabetes. a basically a, a cease and desist <laughs> letter from Warner Brothers Legal, really? saying you had no right to sculpt our character. We are we want that character <gasps> back. No, no way. Yeah, and we're like, really? what the? F we and we sent them a letter back saying this is back when we were letters. <laughs> um, I remember it well. I put wax and my seal on it. Um, and we said, you can have it, but you have to pay us for the time and the energy we use because we understand. Yeah, that's you know, fair. Valuable asset. They'd even scanned it. They scanned it to, to, oh, wow. to, to make use of it in yeah, the digital yeah. model. And then so we went back and forth and we were like, so we we called Chuck Rovin and just said, Hey, could you please? He's like, what? He was outraged. Oh yeah. And then they dropped it and they said, yes, but you must, you can never show it. So we just put it in our display room. You can never print a picture of it. You can never, like, really, wow. This is how it works. Huh? That was a uh, nice what if, lesson. I mean, I took pictures of it. Please spread them around. Let's get, <laughs> I, none of those lawyers still work it. They only last for about a year anyway. At, I, I know. And you're bringing studio. up another point. Um, er, early on in the practical side, a Stan Winston and Rick Baker own the rights to the characters and uh, probably <laughs> that'll around, never happen again. No, but or, or I, I can specifically remember I was at Stan's when that that actually changed is someone came in for a project and, you know, Stan showed it, but they're like, no, we own it. We're going to do it. There's no more of that. The, the right. studio owns it and locks it down. Mm. And I, I mean, that was another big part of, of the yeah. studio thing was that because you created it, Stan and Rick, they owned it. Yeah. Because it was their thought. And I, I, I would love to find out how that switched. Yeah, I I, uh, I do think that Jurassic Park had something to do with that. Well, you know, um, Lucas uh, famously kept the uh, merchandising for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. and Fox that. after yep. that said, never again. You know, when they saw yeah. how much yep. money oh, that yeah. was making, right? as much as the movies were making. Yeah. And uh, I believe that Stan... If not, um, if not triple. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would bet. Yeah. Um, I think that Stan... Uh, I, I, the story that I heard was Stan had a budget to create those dinosaurs he, or he, he turned in a budget and they're like too much, too much, too much. And he said, well, if you like, you know, cut a couple of these dinosaurs out, I'll do it for your target number, but you got to give me points. And he got something like a half a point or mm. something or a point, whatever in, in Jurassic Park. Wow. So that is a such a small film. shit ton of money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so he, so probably at that point, you know, Anybody, any smart studio exec is going, look what we're giving away. Let's just hire us, you know, work for hire. And, mm. uh, and that's another sort of like when you mentioned the residuals yeah. and uh, 
and and SAC Screen Actors Guild working as puppeteers on the stuff. And uh, that's another r enticing reason not to use practical effects because they know they don't have to deal with those unions and they don't have to yeah, pay right. out so any that. money. It's like an mm -hmm. animator doesn't get any uh, residuals, yeah. right? Did yeah. You, do you think that that, that that era will ever ever come back with with you know, I mean, Unreal is free, free to use, right? Free to learn. You've got photo reel scans of things. You've got cosplayers making better costumes. Yeah. Phenomenal stuff. Yeah, phenomenal, yeah, you know, amazing. like working Iron Man stuff. Yeah, shit and, that steams yeah. and lights up. And <laughs> yeah, and you're just like, oh, practically? Like, oh, okay. And, you know, 3D printers, you know, you yeah. have the high end all the way down to the low end that mm. are completely affordable. And, you know, even like right now, like we're shooting on, on black magic cameras and like these are absolutely amazing and affordable yeah, to get. Beautiful. Like, I love them. I think that we're going to see a resurgence of independently owned films. That's you know? the key. I mean, for yeah. me, that's the key is like I, I we've only gotten uh, participation, merchandising participation on one movie and that was Demolition Man. And somehow it's it was it the three C sales. Yeah, I, wish. <laughs> I don't know how to work them. I don't know how to use them. Which is, or was it the cursing machine in the back? I feel like you you would have made the cursing. machine. Was there a the cursing back. machine? Yeah, every time he cursed it. Oh yeah, him the yeah, money. Find yeah. him. That was yeah. so great. Yeah, and then when he had uh, through osmosis while he was frozen, he learned knitting. Yes, and they, he's like. <laughs> pull out this knitting. What a great movie! Great movie. We gotta redo that. Yeah, that would be a great streaming series. Actually, yeah. it's and it's so satirical. It's oh, it is. I think it would be right. For, but um, <laughs> Taco but, uh, Bell is the yeah, they're singing jingles. And, uh, <laughs> the winner of the fr what is it? The restaurant wars. Yeah, the restaurant wars. They, Taco Bell won. War, yeah. So they're the, the only restaurants that, that exist are Taco Bell. <laughs> Anyways, we're, we're getting um, off topic. <laughs> yeah, the, but but uh, but we got that. We got this merchandising participation, which is valueless because every studio <laughs> lies i mean obviously they didn't lie for stan because did you ever see his house the irony is no. stan had a beautiful bought of this beautiful mansion um and a youtube youtuber has bought it uh, now so wow. it's like some you know 22 year old really? youtube kid lives in stan stan winston's house wow yeah. that's yeah. crazy yeah his old that was you know i was always bummed Maybe I got a new that career. I never, I'm a YouTuber. Yeah, we're gonna have to search Too that late. guy down. <laughs> um, was getting into the industry later and not being able to meet Stan. Uh, but I met Matt and yeah. worked, you know, at the Stan Winston School for just a little bit. And you know, being there and talking with Matt and you know, and Eric, th those guys are great over there. Yeah. Uh, I still watch those classes because you learn. You yeah. know, you learn from them. Yeah. And one of the nicest things I think anyone has ever said to me was Matt goes, you know, if my dad were here, he would have loved you. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. I think he would have. Yeah. Now that I think of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, Stan. I, I like Stan a lot. He Not that he wasn't a controversial character uh, and with his own complexities and uh, his own ego and everything. But the opportunities I got from him and and the the learning experience I got, which was not um, it was beyond technique and all that. He wasn't yeah. really he wasn't really a guy who would be like, let me show you how to properly mix packs paint, any of that stuff. He was more about bigger ideas and bigger, you know, mm. how, to, how to work with people and and, uh, uh, and 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 positivity. And and he really gave you the sense that uh, I want that job. He dumped a lot of responsibility on you. Mm. And and uh, you know, guys at a at a very young age, you can ask uh, Steve Wang about that, right? On mm -hmm. on the Predator, yeah. him and Matt Rose were like in charge of making that Predator suit. Yeah, um, well, I think and, that for, that forces you, uh, you know, the cream rises to the top. Yeah, you, you know, and that that pushing. Maybe he understood that that's what would bring the best out of people is yeah. challenging them, w without them realizing that he had their back. Yeah. But it put the pressure on for yeah. them to perform yeah. and really deep down, dig down deep and pull their best out. Yeah. And I think that that he knew that, uh, uh, you know, it's a muscle that you exercise. Taking on responsibility makes you stronger so that you can take on more it responsibility. Does? Oh, yes. Yeah. Just, um, <laughs> to learn these things. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's for uh, our. And in fact, I it was it was true for me. Like I was all like, oh. I don't, he was a very big family guy, Stan mm -hmm. was, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I don't know, I'll never get married because I want kids because it's a distraction for my career and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And Stan's, you know, slaps you. 
so to speak, mm -hmm. and says, listen, you will find the energy because now you have to, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you have, if you are married, if you have children that are depending on you, oh, you will yeah. have to oh, yeah. do that. And then he, and then he also said, and, and also once you get married and buy a house, then I got my hooks in you <laughs> and you can never afford to leave me. Uh, no, so no, he was he was great. how many kids I, you got four four geez yeah. no and, and i mean i understand that I, I mean there was a time uh you know i took every job that i knew that was going to be overtime because yeah. you know you, right. had to, you had to hit that i was like yep. uh, this job uh what are we in the last three months yeah, yeah i'll take it because i know the whole three months were going to be overtime and yeah. i was like it was going to pad my yes, bank account this yeah, was I mean, always this is my observation of, of crew people Wait, you guys you guys married. keep pad your bank account nobody, <laughs> somebody nobody told me more. yeah there's no there's no more padding <laughs> It's like an old teddy bear that has had the padding. Poor Teddy Ruck stuff. Explain out of it. that one. Stuffed uh, teddy bear. What? Where stuffed are you going with teddy that? bear padding ton. Okay. Uh, That's what there was a ton of uh, padding. There you go. In that fun. I don't know. <laughs> um, you can cut that part out. <laughs> We're definitely leaving that in. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, the bloopers are good, right? Yeah. No? yeah. That's good. Excuse me. I just need to text. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, what, what was I doing? I was somebody said to me, like, uh, don't you realize when you when you fawn over Stan Winston that, you know, not all of us had a great experience with him. And I said, well, because, you know, you figure you, he has had thousands of people work for him. He yeah. has had a lot. Yeah. And, you know, and I know this myself. I've yeah. had a, I've had I think I was finger counting. I think I probably had a thousand artists. Work really? For wow. Really? And technicians and all that. So wow. if a mere 10 percent of them hate my guts. That's 100 people that think <laughs> Alec Gillis is an asshole. <laughs> Um, and that's you pretty good odds. Please, you can't please Those everybody. are good stats. No, can't. Those are good stats. Sir. Those are good stats. I'm 90% yeah, successful if that's the case. I heard a uh, an Italian guy told me, uh, he said, no man is a pastry. And I'm like, what? And he said, <laughs> no is man is a pastry. Everybody loves a pastry. But no uh, man can be loved by everyone. Uh, oh, well, okay. Interesting. Wor words of wisdom. No man is a pastry. No, no man's, man's a pastry. pastry. I like yum, that. Yum. That's the title of this episode. <laughs> no man's a pastry. <laughs> Now, it, it is hard. And, and you know, I, I know for myself, moving up to management is you have to make those decisions sometimes that is not going to please everybody. Yeah. That's yeah. business. You're running a business that side. again. I hate that side. No, it is. But you're running a business. So you have yeah. to make those decisions sometimes and it doesn't please everybody. So, yeah. But you know what? I, I've, 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 I've really come to find out that if you're just honest and you tell people what's going on instead of, yeah, I'm in the corner, this is my ring, you know, uh, if you golem it, so to speak, yeah. it just hurts people's feelings. It does. And you people, know? people, if you are upfront with people and honest with them, first of all, I yes. have to be honest because I'm not smart enough to be a good liar. <laughs> Um, cause I'll just, you know, I would just trip up. I learned that I think when I was about four or five and I tried to lie and it was, you know, not so good. Um, Alec, did you eat that chocolate? Huh? And it's yeah, all over your face. Yeah. No. <laughs> Prove it. Um, but, uh, but, it, but if people are already sort of, if you've got a good record of, of treating people, you know, with respect, then, then they tend to yeah. treat you back. Not yeah. all the time. Sometimes people, there are some people who can never be pleased and who are, you know, um, just, that's just how it is. And, and you gotta, you gotta just accept that and not beat yourself up over that one. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of what, you know, our philosophy is always. Are you talking about coworkers or, or significant others? Uh, no, I'm talking, yeah, just, no, no, there's no, there's no, <laughs> you have no, just no chance with significant others. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. They're a vicious bunch. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so that that's just like, you know, for me, it's always like I do enjoy people. So if we can have a fun workspace, it does go back to Stan. Stan yeah. used to say, I don't, uh, you know, he loved working at Disney uh, in the makeup, you know, uh, was it Gun Gunther Schiff? Was that the guy's name? I don't know. Uh, that who, sounds who he familiar. Did his, uh, he did his apprenticeship under oh, okay. this guy. Mm. I could be wrong. Matt Winston will correct me. Um, but uh, he, you know, Stan said Disney didn't necessarily pay the best but they were the best place to work. So that's how ADI is always justified being cheap shit. <laughs> uh, cheap shit. You lost me on that one. Gee, I didn't we don't cheap pay shit. squat, uh, uh, but boy, I'll, I'll tickle you. Yeah. <laughs> Which is also crossing some lines yeah. now. I have well, document you have to sign shopping. later about that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll call HR in for that. We'll, we'll HR puffing stuff. Yeah. Hey, now. 
Giger, yeah. HR Giger. Can you imagine if HR Giger was in charge of your HR department? <laughs> oh, oh God, that would God. be crazy. Oh, my. But it's you know, I, I, how does he talk? Uh, do you ever? Giger, you, yes, he talks like this. He was. I talked to him <laughs> twice on the phone on Alien yeah. Three because mm-hmm. he he didn't want to come to uh, Pinewood. Mm. Um, he wanted to stay in Zurich, and he was sculpting things and designing things and sending them in for Fincher's approval. I got to get Paul in here to tell some of the. Interesting Giger stories. Paul, oh, Paul Komodi. Yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he went no. to Lee, Lee lived with him, didn't he? Yeah. He yeah. worked at his place. And, yeah. It's amazing. Giger didn't like us. <laughs> Giger, Giger hated <laughs> Woodruff and Gill. But he liked, he liked Paul. He liked Paul, oh, well, which good. is most important. That's good. But Paul can tell you, when you get him in here, just say, what was Giger's problem with Gillis and Woodruff? And I, I, that saddened me because it was, uh, it was uh, he, he, he started to, um, Fincher didn't always love every single thing that, that uh Giger presented mm. you know like he would he would sort of go off he's a mad genius right so mm. he would like here's an alien that has saxophone uh levers on its head so it can play its head like a saxophone right mm-hmm. and, which is a fascinating idea but i can see why a director directing the third alien might go Ooh, i don't think i'm gonna do that right so there were a few of those things, but yeah. there was like lots of his stuff. And <laughs> you certainly, see him coming around the corner. Yeah, but the sexual but when, side, well, that was what he wanted to do. He wanted you to hear, yeah, he wanted you to hear, yeah, Harlem Nocturne or some 90s, uh, uh, 90s sexy music. sex man. But he wanted you to like, yeah. like hear the sound of this creepy, unearthly, mm. you know, organ. Uh, and and uh, and know that the alien was coming, which is an interesting idea. Maybe yeah. not for the alien, but but a very interesting idea. But Fincher wasn't particularly interested in that. And there were some other things, but there were plenty of things that that Giger was presenting that fin- Fincher was interested in. Uh, but the things that got changed, I think he he you know Giger kind of thought that he was going to have the same relationship with Fincher that he had with uh, Ridley Scott, mm. and uh, so he th- I think he started to yeah. believe that we were the ones who must be turning the director against him uh, because he'd had good conversations with it and he didn't know anything about us and didn't want to believe it. but it's just it it was sort of transactional at that point you're you know you you're a uh, you're a, a designer right and but he yes. he was an artiste yep. and a, and a genius at it and it was his baby so there there was a lot of, but ultimately he he uh, he 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 wouldn't talk to us we got wind that he he was on he liked the effects initially yeah. he sent said very nice things and then he you know sent letters to fox and and weird you know he was trying to sue them and stuff like that yeah uh b- because he, he 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 there was a dispute over the oscar right uh, tom and i had our names on that oscar and he felt he should have his name either instead of uh, or in addition but here's the, the 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 rules say it's the four people with the most direct uh um you know, influence on the final work. Oh, so, interesting. So, so, I didn't know that there was a, like rulings like that. Yeah, yet. there, there's a, there is a rule book on it, and and uh, so it was reviewed, and and they're like, okay, it's these guys because we built the stuff, and Giger was really, he was not present. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, of course. Uh, um, uh, he he served as a production designer basically, and not all his stuff was, as I mentioned, was used. But guy's a genius, and and it was a little bit, um, it was very saddening to us to have. To have lost his uh, the camaraderie or or whatever might have come of it. I think Legion M is made a documentary on him. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I haven't I haven't seen it yet, uh, but I want to. I want to see it. Yeah. We got kind of a there was a there was a magazine. I can't remember the name of it, uh, but it was a magazine that uh, that Frederick S. Clark I think published. I can't remember. It wasn't it was not Cine Fantastique. Was it Cinefantas saying? Maybe that was Maybe. what it was. Yeah. But they did a sort of a, a sensational kind of a um, hatchet job on us um, where they kind of, uh, you know, put some, st- they, they just, you know, like we had said something like, um, yeah, we were, we were all, we had to be sculpting the creature, right? The main Zeno. So we, we were looking at Giger's books and, you know, we, mm-hmm. we were drawing off of Giger's stuff. You were, you were, you were using it as inspiration. Yeah. 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 And, and making sure it was within the, you know what the, the, the wheelhouse yeah for yeah, sure and what the yeah. director wanted and all that stuff and then coincidentally what what giger had produced looked you know what his new drawings looked very similar like not a surprise yeah and then they said like would your gillis say it's a coincidence that their creature <laughs> looks like giger's work like no. no yeah 
Uh, so anyway, that was a that was a, a interesting early lesson. But the only reason I bring all this up is you asked what did Giger sound like, mm. and that's what he sounded. He sounded like a guy who ran a candy shop, a sweet shop in Zurich, <laughs> and he was very sweet, very it's nice guy. Artist. I love it. I love it. I mean, <clears throat> jumping around. You, you, I mean, <laughs> look, we go to twenty twenty Godzilla versus Kong, and you went back to miniature effects. I mean was jumping back into that since it's 2020 that you know you kind of got the rust off of doing the miniatures or uh, wait to, 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 well before to, before we go there what? we gotta we gotta talk about Hartbridge now okay go right the, sure d- is it d- directorial debut am i wrong on that or is that the yes yeah yeah it was my debut well, congratulations on that my one, debut yeah. i was debutted <laughs> on that film um <clears throat> yeah that was a that was a fun one and that was that was we didn't do any miniature stuff mm-hmm. in Godzilla. I'm not okay. sure what you're looking at. Oh, I'm just, we'll, we'll just, call IMDb. What does it say? Miniatures, what does it say? Of, miniatures effects supervisor. Really? Yeah, that's uh, IMDb. <laughs> we'll, we'll call you out, and and okay. you know he's yeah. telling you it's wrong. Yeah. That is, yeah, no, it's wrong. Sorry, I'm not sure who Mr. Imdb <laughs> thinks. Uh, what, uh, I don't know. No, we did we did designs uh, designs for uh, really it, it it amounted to Rodan. Uh, okay. Um, and that and that was you know exclusively that and um, that's the sculpture I was talking about from Michael Doherty Got it. that Tim yeah, Martin in, yeah. sculpted. Yeah. And if I don't mention Tim Martin, Tim's right a great now, guy. He's a great guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I can bust his guy. chops right now. If I don't mention Tim Martin, I'm going to get a, like a my phone's going to blow up. <laughs> and you go, and Maury, you got huh? to say yeah, Maury. Well, here's the other thing. Yeah, oh, no. is that like <laughs> every guy who this is what I've always liked. Yeah, I love these guys. You know, all these artists, but man. A, they can be a handful, right? Yes, they can. So, like, <laughs> yes, they there can. Is, there Are you is talking a, about me? You, Justin. <laughs> um, artists. The yeah. Artists. It's tend because to be a it is sense. so collaborative, yeah. right? It it's is. like it, it, you don't just sit down with a blob of clay and start sculpting. You probably have somebody else's work in front of you. Yeah. I like uh, this is what I was getting at earlier is that I like that. Um, I like to keep designs a little bit less than photo reel in the, in the, um, Photoshop phase, if I'm going to build it or if we're going to have a sculptor work on it, because I want the sculptor to then take it even further. further right. And I want to get multiple artists uh, take yeah. on it. And that's interesting. I'm not, yeah. I'm not so like, it, it, it's different. Like Paul Komoda is, a, is, a, mm-hmm. is an interesting, um, a very interesting case because he has such a specific style. He's like, he's got this fantastic cthulhu sort of uh style tentacles and multiple you know it's, it's just i want like him to put insane. a book out so badly yeah and, and his stuff is just insane so yeah. i might like with somebody like that like on the thing 2011 paul was a big part of that those and sculptures like, still go, are amazing just run with it right because yeah. i know what you're going to do is is going to be great i don't necessarily have yeah. to like have someone else and it's not that i don't put another artist on some on another artist on an artist's work to to just like correct it or anything but i just want to I just want, I don't want the design phase to be closed off at, you know, somebody sitting in a monitor. Mm. If, if we're going to build it or if we're going to take Try it everything. to sculpt. Yeah. Like, because there are people out there like who don't do digital work mm-hmm. and they're, and, and they don't draw, but they're unbelievable sculptors and they get like incre- Mario Torres, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love his sculpture. And you know, I, I would be just as happy having him, uh, you know, sculpt a little mini bust yeah. to design a character as I would anybody sitting down to do zebra. So, and I know Mario and I, you know, he, he's actually done some stuff on my personal projects because he's got that, uh, Mike Rotella. Mm. I love his work also. Um, he's got a, a style and a look at it. If I can plug that guy in you mm-hmm. know, to a sculpture, uh, and, and, and anyway, I'm, I'm just saying that, that, um, that I like to have the execution also be part of the, uh, process part of the, part of the, the design, design process. process. Mm. Well, you, it, it sounds like you get the Photoshop to a certain point that everybody can kind of agree. And then adding that life to it is, is that last 10% that you're, you're getting that specific artist yeah. to actually add that. Yeah. But it, and it is part of the whole process. The blue sky, my, the blue sky area yeah. is my favorite part. Yeah. Of and, and, every there, and there may be ideas that come up long after, like you, you're yep. talking about yeah. like, um, like months, right? So you may like design something over a period of a couple few weeks and then you live with that thing for a while and go, Hey, what if it was, you know, purple yeah, and like green? What if, it, what if it yeah. was, you know, whatever. And I don't want to just like, 
I, I, I don't like it if somebody just goes, no, we've already done that. You know, we're that's done. Yeah. Close that up. Explore. I don't want it, I don't want it to be endlessly because you right. can waste time and money if you're just endlessly, um, yeah. you know, playing in the sandbox. But anyway. No, it's 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 honestly it's it's my favorite part. You know, like we we recently worked on uh, Black Adam and getting to work with, you know, artists like David Mason, you know, Steve, you know, Teeps, like tossing ideas back and forth in the bullpen yeah. is my favorite part yeah. of the job yeah. because you, everybody gets jazzed up and mm. then they're like, oh, hey, hand me this asset or let me let me try something. I want to see this. Yeah. Or, and that's that's really I really enjoy that part a lot. That's yeah. it, it's super fun. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. But yeah, no. Uh, so I remember I remember walking in to uh, ADI at that point. And you had you had the the black magic cameras, and you were like, "Here, here, watch this," and it was just it was cotton balls everywhere. And oh, I was yeah. like, "What are you, what are you doing?" Yeah. And you were like, "You did it real slow." And I was like looking at the monitor, and I was like, oh, "Clouds, that's it's amazing." Alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're big fans of black magic. That's what yeah. we that's what we shot Harbinger down on, um, and we started with the with the the two point six. What was it called? The two point five. Two point five K. Yeah. And it just looks like a weird shoe box. Yeah. It was their first, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was a little skeptical just by looking at it. I thought, I don't know. One interesting. <laughs> and then I saw, you know, we projected it big. It's amazing. No, it it's looks gorgeous. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Least ergonomic camera ever designed. Yeah. It's a literally a, it's a lunchbox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it did. A lunchbox. That's the greatest analogy for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks like something that would have been on a, a YouTube spy plane or something bolted yeah. to the side of it or something. And but since but then, you built half that ship too. Yeah. We did boat. a ton of. Yeah, uh, in, yeah. In the studio. Right? Oh, yeah. No. Harbinger was like, that's where I got to take everything. I and mashed that, potatoes. That, Oh, the mashed potato. That was for the trailer. I learned my lesson. We used little like flaked potatoes for falling. But then you're like, you know, you're also like, using water. And it smells like, oh my like God. Mashed and it's really slippery, right? Like, ah, I'm walking through a picnic. A, uh, I don't know. It looked great, though. It did. That's it all did. that matters. It got us there. It got us yeah. the, to the trailer for the, uh, for the uh, uh, Kickstarter. Yeah. And, uh, I forgot and you we, kickstarted that film. Yeah, we yeah. Did. We kickstarted it, and then um, we had um, a, a gentleman by the name of Sultan Saeed Al Dharmaki, who from uh, Abu Dhabi, who brought in more money. Mm. And we what's his company called again? I can't remember. Dark Dunes. Dark Dunes. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, they were they were great. You know, they basically you know let us do our thing, and that that thing was to basically you know make an '80s homage film. Um, I called it like cinematic meatloaf, you know, like comfort food, um, where it was a uh, it was kind of a mashup of of the thing and alien set on a um, Lance was in that. Matt was in uh, that. Yeah. 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 So I got to like cast most of the movie from people that I had worked with That's before, good. you know, out of my phone. And then uh, plenty of miniatures and all it that. It pays stuff. to be the king. huh? Yes. The king. <laughs> the king. Uh, the king with the budget of a pauper. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it um yeah. and uh and, but it was a blast it was just a, a you know and we we built everything in a, in a in a warehouse in chatsworth but made it look like the north atlantic and just you know using see that's and, walking like i don't get to do it enough but getting to walk on set is my favorite thing yeah my absolute favorite thing because yeah. you get transported you know what i mean you're yeah. just like Oh, this is going to be fun. You yeah. know, like, yeah. Super and you get cool. to walk through beautiful, somebody's beautiful artwork. Yeah. Which is an environment. Yeah. That you're yeah. In. I love that stuff. Yeah. We had some interesting, um, you know, like, like if you were to look at our sets from outside the, uh, from outside of them, um, they were a mishmash of all weird, different odd uh, flats because we went around to uh, productions that were tearing their sets down. And got the flats from them. Oh, nice! Just so that we didn't have to scavenger. Build the wall. Yeah, and then we yeah. just repaint them and reconfigure them. So we we're yeah. kind of kit bashing in full scale. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, knowing what areas we would need. I think I drew it out on a big piece of paper. Like, well, here's the galley. Here's a lot of stuff. You know, here's this. Here's that. And then we just, you know, shot the whole movie in a single warehouse, which is the Corman style, and then used uh, uh, stock shots. So we oh. used stock shots from The Deadliest Catch. 
and on the on the deck huh. where they're like pulling up like i didn't we didn't have the money to build like the crab pots you yeah know, mm -hmm. that are full of the crabs and yeah. all that so we used stock shots and just mimicked our lighting on the set to match the stock shots and match the grunden's you know yellow slickers yeah to our to our characters and uh oh, that's funny smart and it, and it, yeah and yeah. The, and and those stock shots were all like 1080p 1080p 1080 mm -hmm. Right. I HD. Ten, yeah, they were they were just 1920 by 1080. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yep. So so and we projected it at the uh Egyptian. They look great. Yeah. They look great. I, I mean we, we we did HD, we went to 2K, and somehow they skipped the 2K and jumped to 4K now. Yeah. But HD does hold up and most it's more a tech thing now. Most yep. uh most theaters uh project at uh you know 2K. Yeah, and, oh, I didn't know that. Well huh. You, you you realize they made they made the TVs 4K before they really yeah. had it solved and they started right. selling the TVs so then yeah. they jumped to we went HD to 4K whatever happened to the 2K TVs yeah. and I think it was more they made the tech before they actually yeah. you know figured it out yeah. and they look great yeah I know Don't it's, uh, we could go into that <laughs> it, it, it gets me going but you walk into those shops I feel like we need a it. forum so we can all talk, ah, I could tech be, talk. Not, the yeah. way I look at it is is you know back in the day when I was a kid you know, uh, there were, you know, movies shot on super 16 and I 16 and all mm. that stuff. And they would liberally intercut, you know, um, some of the Harryhausen movies have this mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, you know, the uh, mysterious Island has those guys, uh, those pirates that are, uh, you know, and they look like they're shot in some other format. I don't know what it was, but it's creepy. And I love it, right? Like, it's, yeah. So yeah. I didn't worry so much about that, about the K of it, right? It's about the, it's about the color correction and the quality, the, the quality of the chip and all that kind of stuff. Which is why I was happy to shoot with a two point five K camera as opposed to some big. What it doesn't allow you to do is reposition a lot, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. Fincher is famous for shooting whatever six eight K or whatever, and just kind of pulling back, you know, setting up a shot yeah. and then widening out. And then just going and, and then being able to play that. with the composition, yeah. yeah. And and I like that. I like that idea, but uh, we didn't have that luxury on, on Harvey. Interesting. Yeah. 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 You didn't know to like block your face totally. You can move around. <laughs> oh, it was for that. <laughs> no, oh, come man. on, you're a handsome yeah, guy. Really... Stop blocking your yeah. face. Why do you want to hide it? Is it this this. Uh, I know. This has become my headshot. <laughs> I did this as a goof, like a like a super like cool um, shot like this, yeah. and I put it on uh, Instagram, and now it's like we've got somebody. I did a, a live thing, and we've got Alec Gillis, and there I am doing that. <laughs> okay. No, it, but it, get, but getting to the social media, you know, your Instagram is 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 blowing up. It's great. Everybody should follow you, uh, as well as you guys. You guys have an amazing YouTube channel. Yeah. With lots of there. behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, Wait, are you the YouTuber that, that bought Stan's house? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know how the hell I uh, missed that boat. So yeah. as, as we wrap that up, I wanted to ask you one last question. is Because you're in the practical side and, and you're switching over to directing. What was the biggest challenge that you had to do from the practical and start directing that you didn't guess that was going to happen, that your biggest learning challenge at that point becoming the director that you didn't know uh you know what was it it's you know honestly there was so much familiar territory because i've done um well i've directed shorts before mm -hmm. and stuff like that but and some tv episode episodic tv kind of stuff and uh <clears throat> the uh and a lot of uh a lot of second unit work okay. right um did you do any second unit work for the the bloom clamp shorts the oath studios no but oh, i okay. did do like you know on alien resurrection mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know probably going back to oh, leviathan awesome. and stuff like that like, oh, cool. it's just not uncommon you know yeah. that, that 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 there might be a second unit director who's like oh my god you know like on uh Pitoff was our second unit director who's the visual effects supervisor on alien resurrection mm. and he was like you have got to do this because I got the the, the alien, the queen alien, and the and the and the you know the newborn hatching mm -hmm. and tearing the face off and all. So we had like twenty five puppeteers. So I'm out there. Twenty five. Yeah, puppeteers. that was the biggest puppeteer wow. setup I've I've directed. Um, but I would say the most fun aspect was mm -hmm. to work with actors because okay. it's just it's just so it is just so fun, you know that that and it's and it's so like directing animatronics where you've got to like arch that eyebrow a little bit more and mm -hmm. you're breaking it. You don't do that with a human yeah. being. 
<laughs> if you try, you know, so. they emote. They yeah, actually, they, they actually they can emote. It. Yeah, and they're and you they're might get trained. some spit in your coffee they're, if you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're <laughs> trained. Much. They come prepared. They come prepared, <laughs> which is really nice. Yeah. Um, so it was, that was that was that was a joyful to me, and it made me want to do more stuff that even has less effects in it. That's or I, I kind of get that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've kind of done, you know, I mean, I've done a lot of the effects stuff and so it's, it's a blast. I love you, it. Well, you have the history to know what works and what doesn't, mm. you but know, it's a challenge to do what's worth spending time on yeah. and what's not. And there's a new challenge to working mm -hmm. with actors, which is, which is, you know, um, that, um, and, and you can screw that up, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but it's, but it's, uh, but it's a fun challenge. And that, that I think is what, you know, I, I loved about it was that I was in unfamiliar territory there. Yeah. You know, Stretch and with ensembles too, like just man, just like doing a like a dinner table. Everybody says this, like dinner table scenes are a nightmare of like crossing the line and just like oh, oh yeah, I never God. even thought about that. Yeah. So like yeah. that was the like one of the first things we <laughs> you shot. mean like this? <laughs> no, just yeah. yeah, one of the first things we shot was in the galley, like everybody getting together and you're introducing all the characters and stuff, and I'm like shit this room is a third the size i wish it was and we'd cut some mm. hatches in to shoot you know to get yeah. stuff but um but it becomes like a you're like that cut just doesn't work i can't cut from that person to that person also like actors who aren't who are really good but not necessarily super experienced um the continuity of it you know like people somebody somebody picks up a potato chip bag and starts eating doing their lines and like you're a little movie you're moving fast you don't necessarily have a script supervisor who's going <laughs> you switched hands on that take which take do you want to you know mm, so yeah. this is why like when i've been in front of the camera i tend not to do anything with props because i'm like i'm not gonna fucking remember <laughs> yeah what i picked up when so who's a machine is matt winston matt winston he's very experienced right he yeah. he will repeat exactly once he dials it in and you're rocking and oh, rolling on, yeah. on take after take. He dials it in and your continuity is flawless with him. That was something that's like an invisible skill that that uh, Matt, you're coming. You, Matt, you're coming in next, by the way. We, oh, uh, no. he's on his way. No, please. We, yeah. we, we, we just got to put that Matt. out there in the universe. I love Matt. And I met Matt when I think he was just maybe turning 13. Oh, oh really? Wow. So 14. you've known him for a long yeah, time. Yeah, because Stan was one of the first jobs I had. Stan, he's like, Baby okay, Stan? guys, practically. Okay, guys, come <laughs> on, you go to my house. And we're all like, oh, okay. We get in his car, we drive to his house. What do you need? I need you to put up that basketball uh, hoop <laughs> for my son. It's his birthday. He's coming home soon. So chop, chop. And uh, we put this thing up for him, and, which is great because yeah. Matt ended up an NBA superstar. <laughs> hey, yeah, I think I saw him there. Yeah. As we wrap up another episode of 10K Hours, we want to say, Alec, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you man. so much. Thank I, you I mean, both. your resume is huge. The history. And some of it is amazing. accurate. Some of it's accurate. <laughs> some of it's accurate. But I actually, really thank you. And thank you for the history. I mean, that was, it was a great interview. That was great. Yeah. Thank you for coming out. Well, I enjoyed it, guys. And thank you very much. It's a pleasure meeting you. I've never met you no, before first tonight. Time. And you, you also. And I've oh, forgotten everybody's name. That's Clifton back there. Yeah. You can't forget Clifton. Thank I, you, Clifton. I love your cafeteria. <laughs> um, and right around the town, right around here somewhere, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, Justin, it's always a blast to it's hang out always with fun. You. I miss yeah. our times together. I do. We I had do so much it. fun. Well, you're welcome back anytime. We would just giggle all the time, wouldn't <laughs> we? It was a blast. Yeah. I am a giggler. Yeah, well, and 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 uh, and I don't you know laugh. if that's a good thing or you, not. It, it, what I love about you, Justin, is that you laugh at my terrible jokes, which means you're <laughs> laughing a lot because my jokes suck. They're 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 quite good. Some but I don't them. want to tell you that because it might go to your head. Right. So don't tell Heinze. Okay. Don't yeah. tell Heinze. Heinze has no <laughs> sense of humor. Heinze, if you're listening, go to bed, honey. <laughs> And we're Thanks, out. Thank you so much. Thank you.